episode 3529, Fuel Your Dreams with Emotional Resilience. Moms, it's time to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew who you are in mind, body, and spirit. Welcome to Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, the show to help you do just that. Here's your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Happy, happy day. Are you ready for an extraordinary week? Oh, come on. It's a brand new week. That means if you set your mind on the right path, oh yes, you could fuel your dreams with emotional resilience. Let's dive in. For those of you who are brand new to Creature Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted to have your presence. If you already even had the opportunity, you'll want to head on over to CreatureNow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter. They keep it simple strategy, everyday solutions to live, love, and impact. Well, this episode is brought to you by AIM, inspiring connection and community. All right, deep breath because we're going to blow through some things. Number one, we're going to be changing some things here at Create Your Now. Now, you're going to still hear me every single day on the podcast, but we're going to be bringing brand new things at different locations at different times, a way for you to work with me, to get closer with me, to be able to interact with me. And guess what? We don't have to be on social media. We're revamping the website and we're bringing to you a whole new section. Have you ever thought about being an author? Do you ever think about, gosh, I would like to be on the podcast. I want to share my story because my strength is my story. Well, stay tuned because incredible things are around the corner. So if you're not on our email list, you want to get on there. So make sure you sign up. And I know you're like, Christiane, you don't do emails. You're here on the podcast all the time. You're right. I think in my whole over decade now of doing podcasting, which I think we're now in, I don't know, 11th, maybe going on our 12th year, I lose track regardless of how long we've been here. You're correct. I've only done like three newsletters. Why? Because I'd rather talk to you. I love the interaction, but because we have so much going on, I don't want you to miss anything and I want you to be able to go back and look at things. So yes, get on that newsletter list. Say, yep, I, I want to stay in touch with you and we will make sure we get that out. Now, I will tell you this though, the newsletter probably won't be starting for a few more weeks because we've got to get a few other things in the work. Okay. So there's a lot of things behind the scenes. If I could just peel back everything and maybe I will, I talk about that quite often, but with my home under renovations, I feel like my life has been under renovations and now create your nows under renovations. Do you ever just shake your head going like, I don't think I can handle this. And all of a sudden you're like, where are my dreams ever going to come true? Maybe you're trying to take care of everybody else. And maybe you're trying to actually fit in things within your nooks and crannies of your own day. Well, you can have all the knowledge in the world, right? You can be connected to everyone and anyone, but if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't believe who you are, God's calling on your life, you're not going to go far. Therefore, fuel your dreams with emotional resilience. As you begin to navigate through life with your aspirations and ambitions and saying, you know what, this is, I just know this is my calling. I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It it looks different when I'm out there in the professional world. It looks different when I'm at home within the privacy of my own four walls. But there is this through line that means, yeah, this is who I am. And I love who I'm becoming. If that's you, it becomes very crucial to manage your emotions and feelings effectively. Because otherwise, it's going to get the best of us. You know road rage, right? People cannot manage their emotions well. Look at road rage. We have a world right now that is all consumed with instant gratification. We want the fast food right now. We want it really quick. And most of the time, if we're honest, it really doesn't taste that good. It only tastes good chemically because of our taste buds and how we have been programmed. We'll leave that for another episode. But seriously, I think we need to be honest with where we are, what we want in our life, because you are hitting a critical point in your life. Maybe you're over the half century mark. Maybe you're embarking on, oh, I'm done having kids. So what does it look like from this point on? My dream was to have a family. I fulfilled that. Now what? What's next? These internal factors can either fuel your journey towards success or become obstacles that hinder your progress. If you allow your emotions to set you off, to overpower your rational thinking, your dreams may fade into the background while you focus on extinguishing the fire ignited by your feelings. Your feelings are there. It's a great barometer. But it can't be how you live your life. 
Because let me tell you this, if I can be ever so honest with you, if I was to live my life from just my feelings, I wouldn't be where I am right now talking to you. Number one, this podcast would have never happened. Okay, maybe it would have, but I probably would have quit within the first year. Why? Because what I thought was supposed to happen didn't happen. Based on everybody else's expectations and decisions and what they were doing with their podcast, what I was doing with mine was exactly what I was supposed to be doing. But if I looked at somebody else's blueprint, it didn't match mine. So therefore, I began to question myself, am I really supposed to be doing this? This moved on into every other facet of building Creature Now. I've got the original blueprint of what God gave me when I heard my name. And and I know you might be saying, Christiane, this is a little too much for me on a Monday. That's okay. Come back and listen to it another time. But hear me out for just a minute. You may not have heard your name called out like I did. It was so scary, but it was so clear at the same time. And it wasn't scary in the fact that I was like shivering. And I couldn't face what I heard. It was that my name came so clear. Have you ever had that dream where you feel like you were right there? Okay, well, I was right there. And it wasn't a dream. I woke up and my name was called out specifically. But no one was there. My husband was, but he was snoring as usual. I love him to death. Happy birthday, sweetheart. Yes, another year around the sun. Praise the Lord, we're doing it together. But he was snoring, and that was fabulous. It was great, but I still heard the name. And I was like, dag nabbit, I really want to sleep. It was like 2 o'clock, I don't know, in the morning, some odd number that I just I didn't want to get up. Who wants to get up? And I heard it so clear, and in it was like a millisecond. I knew exactly what Creator Now is all about. I still have that notebook today, the blueprint that God gave me. The whole idea, the whole outline. Now, does it look exactly how I thought about it in that moment? I can't say that it looks exactly. But let me tell you, every bit of it is where we are right now, which gives me goosebumps. But you see, if I would have listened to everybody else's expectations, listened to their dreams, listened to the way they thought I needed to do my podcast, move my business forward... I would have quit a long time ago. I was frustrated so many times. I would go to conferences. I would talk with experts. I would spend tens of thousands of dollars to learn from the best of the best of the best. Why? Because I wanted to expand my dream, my vision. And I had to learn uncharted waters for myself. I had to learn to be the captain of a ship that I had never been before online. And it wasn't about just being a part of Facebook. Facebook was nothing. I was a pioneer woman back then. There were not very many daily podcasters back when I started. In fact, I think I can actually count on one hand the daily podcasters. Kind of crazy. There weren't even barely over, there weren't even like a quarter of a million podcasts out there at the time. And let alone women? Oh yeah, that was even harder to find. But I pressed forward. And it was interesting because even as I went through with with my idea, which was God's idea, and I was like, okay, Lord, and I would question him, you really want me to do this? Yes, I do. Are you sure? Yes, I do. And I would walk and run and walk and run and walk and run, and I would lift weights and do my strength training, and I would work out. And he would tell me during those quiet times, of course, it's quiet time for him more so than me because I was grunting and groaning like, I can't do this anymore. I'm I'm not going to make it. And he's like, oh, yes, you are. Keep going. And oh, by the way, here's another idea. Oh, by the way, you need to do this. Oh, by the way. And I'm like, I can't do all of this. I'm one person. He goes, I will give you what you need. You need to go forward. One step at a time leads to miles of greatness. You see, I was living that out. I'm sharing with you things that I have had to learn along the way charting the waters that were unknown, beginning to lead in a manner that I was like, oh, I don't know. And now, and now, if you could see the details of the original blueprint to the one that he's given me now, in actuality, it gives me goosebumps. Why? Because they do cross over. They do completely interact. However, it's expanded. It's expanded to the point where he says, 
You are taking what I'm giving you to go and impact the world that you touch so that every person that you touch will impact their world that they touch, which means you will be reaching millions. It's not about me. It's about him and serving him here on this earth. You see, I could go into a deep, dark world of how maybe you thought that your life would be. And maybe right now you're in a season where you're like, it's good, but it could be better. We don't have as much money in the bank account. I really do have a dream, but I've had kids and a family. I've put them first. But now I need to start taking what I'm doing. And instead of taking a decade to where I need to go, like you've been doing, Christiane, is I need to make a decade a day. I need to know how to get there faster. I need to know how to speed things up. Well, that's what we're here at Create Now to do. Walking authentically with God in your everyday, doing it the way he wants you to do, and taking the skills that I have learned and giving them to you, and then you saying, okay, this works for me or this doesn't work for me. Right? What I give you is not written in stone. It's not the end all be all, but it is a way. And sometimes when you take that way, it turns into your way. You put your twist on it, your fingerprint on it, your heartbeat to it, and it makes it yours. Hence, create your now. This whole thing of what I do has never been about me. And I think that's what we have to remember when we want to live out our dreams is that we can't let our emotions and feelings dictate the direction that we go, because if they did, we would never go anywhere. We may only be a foot off the shore. And let me tell you, if you're only a foot off the shore, you're not living your dreams. You've got to be willing to go in uncharted waters. You've got to be willing to go into the storm. You've got to be willing to handle the lightning strikes. You've got to be willing that if there's a hole in your ship and there's water coming, you can figure a way to stop that water and still keep charting. Still keep going. To stay committed to your goals without losing sight of your emotions, you must take intentional steps to maintain this healthy balance in your life. Because you see, you're not a mom only in the morning and at night when you're cooking dinner and doing the laundry and then in between times you're a career woman. No, you're always a mom. 24-7, 365 or on the leap year it's 366. Nonstop, you can't separate that. If you're married, you're not married only when you're home in the privacy of your own four walls. And when you go to work, you're not married. No, you're always married, right? We sit here and try to compartmentalize everything. But what we don't compartmentalize are our emotions and feelings. We let them run rapid. If you want to stay committed to your dreams and your goals, it's going to require ongoing effort and dedication to self-awareness. Self-improvement, meaning, yeah, personal development and personal growth and emotional regulation. It's a continuous process of understanding who you are, envisioning who you want to become, who God is calling you to be, and ensuring that your emotions do not derail you from your path to success. However you view success, it's not about what others tell you success is, but how you view it. I know I have a very different definition. And a lot of people question me on it. I'm like, that's okay. You can question me on it. But it's my definition. What's yours? So how do you gain control over your emotions so your dreams can rise to the top? Well, you have to stay grounded in the pursuit of your dreams. That is your kiss to keep it simple strategy. Stay grounded in the pursuit of your dreams. You know, as we discuss what this looks like in real life, I want you to think about how you handle things, good or bad, and where you see yourself right now. What does your life look like? Are you always worried about the dinner dishes and dogs or is there room for the dinner dishes and dogs and dreams? Think about that. This is not about beating yourself up, but looking at it with a compassionate microscope so you can stay grounded in pursuing your dreams. My strength is my story. That's what it is for you. Say that to yourself. My strength is my story. My strength is my story. 
So what does it look like in real life to stay grounded in the pursuit of your dreams? Well, number one, you have to practice mindfulness and self-reflection. And one way to stay grounded in that pursuit, right, is cultivating a habit of introspection. And when you do that, you can better understand your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This self-awareness enables you to identify triggers that may lead to emotional upheaval and respond to challenges with clarity and composure. Remember that compassionate microscope? Yeah. You got to have a compassionate microscope so you can have clarity and composure. You can't regulate your world if you're always in an upheaval, if you're always running on empty, burning the candle at both ends. It doesn't work. Whether you're looking at it from a personal perspective or a professional perspective, mindfulness allows us to navigate complex situations with grace and resilience. Mindfulness is the compass that guides us through turbulent waters, helping us navigate our emotions with grace and clarity. Is that what's happening with you right now in this season that you're in? Hey, happy autumn. Fall has arrived. In fact, I was just noticing yesterday as I was doing some work in the kitchen, we had our lawn guys out just a couple days before. And sure enough, I'm like, seriously, It's fall, autumn has arrived, and all of a sudden, the leaves are coming down. I'm like, this is not fair. And we live in the South, so our leaves haven't started quite changing color yet, but they're being released off the trees. And I'm like, ah, here we go. But let me tell you, it's going to be a fabulous new season. I want you to get excited about what's in front of you, not what you left behind. I don't want you thinking about how you couldn't do something, but what you can do that's before you. You have today, this moment, and you get to choose what you do. And your decision today is going to have a huge impact on tomorrow. So practice that mindfulness and do some self-reflection. It's so important. For me personally, I love to do my self-reflection. Okay, this might be TMI, but I'm telling you anyway. In the shower, yes, and when I'm laying down. Okay, whether it's going to sleep, whether it's going to take a nap, it's just a calming aspect that I do for myself. I can have anything and everything around me going crazy, but if I know I am resting, and that doesn't mean I'm even going to take a nap, but I'm resting my mind. I'm really just kind of zoning out. That's my time of self-reflection. What works for you? Or have you even thought about it? Well, today's a great day to start thinking about it. Number two, Set realistic goals and create a strategic plan. When you set those goals, the realistic ones, not the ones that I want to be an ice skater, you know, in the Olympics, which was a great one, by the way. It was a great goal, but right now I'm past that. So I can't use that. I can use it as an example now, but it's not a realistic goal for me right now. So set those realistic goals and create a strategic plan This will help you create an effective way to stay committed to your aspirations while managing your emotions. And by breaking down your overarching objectives into manageable tasks and milestones, you can track your progress and celebrate small victories along the way. That's the key. You want to feel successful every single day because that's going to give you that little bit of endorphin rush that's going to say, yep. I think I can because what? I know I can. I'm doing it. And this structured approach not only keeps you focused on your goals, but also prevents overwhelming emotions from derailing your momentum. I think I can. I think I can because I know I can. I know I can. Tony Robbins said it, and I think I've shared it here before. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. What are you doing in your life? Are you just literally just kind of getting up and going with the flow? That's great. It works for a while. It works when you have young kiddos and you're really running on their time. I mean, I remember those infancy days. I had five of them. Oh, no, I love them every, it's still to this day. They're, They're just, my children are precious. And you know that, your children are precious, right? Go back to those infancy days when you would hear the cry and you go immediately to answer it. But now the cries are different. They don't have to immediately have you there. In fact, sometimes they need to figure out how to respond first before you come rushing in. So now where do you fit in? 
What is your role? It looks different. Setting goals is not just about reaching the destination. It's about embracing the journey and celebrating every step forward. One step at a time leads to miles of greatness. It's one step, my friend. It's not 2,000. 2,000 are great, but if you take one at a time, and that may end up being 20 a day, but it doesn't matter. It's just the next step. That's when you are going to see what actually can happen. And the belief within yourself is like, I can do it. I can do it because I know I can do it. And then finally, number three, surround yourself with a supportive network. Why do you think I'm so gung-ho about opening up AIM? It is going to be a blast for so many reasons, professionally, personally, spiritually. When you do that, and you have a supportive network of mentors and friends and colleagues, it can provide invaluable guidance and encouragement on your journey towards success, however you define success. Not my definition. Some people define success with so many figures in their bank account. That's fine. I do not. I mean, yes, money helps, but that's not where my heart is. That's no judgment either. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, do I have money on my goal list somewhere? Of course I do. In order to run a business, of course you have to make money. So money is in the top three, but it's not necessarily the very first goal. Now, that's for me, right? In my definition of success, how is that for you? It doesn't matter, right? It's what's right for you. And by seeking advice from experienced individuals who have faced similar challenges, you can gain new perspectives and insights that help you navigate obstacles with confidence and determination. You see, this is not about living someone else's dreams. It's about living your own. However, knowing who's gone before you, knowing and getting some literally real-time help from people who say, I care about you. I care about your family. I want you to succeed, whatever that means to you. That's impact, my friend. That's aim. Building a strong, supportive system not only strengthens our resolve, but it also reinforces our belief in our capabilities and potential, meaning that, yes, I can do this. And in the tapestry of life, a supportive network weaves threads of strength and encouragement fortifying our belief in ourselves and our potential. We need to know that we can do things. We need to have those pats on the back. It's not being an egotistical jerk, okay? It's about being honest with yourself. Now, if you're going around saying, look at me, look what I did this time, I did this, look at me. Okay, that's a different conversation. But you need to say, you know what? You're gifted at this. You need to have those supportive friends around you, mentors, coaches, loved ones that say, you're good at this. And it doesn't have to be every second, but it's a reminder that says, don't give up. In the words of mindset and focus experts, right, the importance of self-belief cannot be overstated. Believing in yourself is the cornerstone of achieving your dreams. Trust in your abilities and never underestimate the power of your potential. Because when you know the power of your potential, you feel it with what? Passion, which allows you to live out your purpose. So I've got a challenge for you. There's some questions I want to ask you. The first one is, where are you unsettled in your emotional resilience? And you're like, Christiane, I've never been asked that question. I know. That's why I ask these weird questions. That's my job because it's important. I ask myself these hard questions. I sit there and I, oh, I stew on them. I, I sit there and I marinate on them. And I sit there and go, oh, that's a good one, Christiane. How, how would you rate that? Where am I? At sometimes I'm like, I'm not really unsettled. I'm pretty good. And other times I'm like, oh my goodness, girl, you are a mess. You can be a mess and settled at the same time. But then you have to understand your barometer so you can get back to earth, right? It's great once in a while to get that endorphin rush and kind of go out of this world, but then you got to come back down to earth and get grounded again. Let me ask you this. What gets under your skin where it's hard to bounce back quickly? Now, I can immediately answer that pretty quickly, what other people say about me. That's a 
Very easy, quick one. Bothered me when I was in elementary, middle school, high school. Bothers me to this day. But let me tell you right now, I handle it totally different. It doesn't matter anymore to me. In fact, if they have enough time to talk about what I'm doing, that means they don't have enough time to impact the world that they touch. They're more worried about the world I'm touching. That means what? My impact is good. So I'm doing something right. Maybe not to their liking, but I'm doing something that's getting their attention. So I can bounce back pretty quickly. But let me tell you, this has taken time. You may have somebody in your workplace, within your career, your colleagues, your place of business. Maybe you own the business. Maybe you work from home, okay? And it's your dog. Okay, not really. I'm just going to blame the dog here because the dogs get blamed for everything. What is it that gets under your skin and how can you change your reaction to it? Which leads me to my next question for you. How can you make a change to redirect yourself in your everyday journey? What change do you need to make that allows you to come back down to earth faster than staying up there, lost in space with your emotions, going all over the place, absolutely going nowhere? And at times you're like, I feel like I'm floundering. You are. But let's come back down to earth. Let's figure out what is not working for you. And by nurturing a positive mindset, but a realistic one, practicing that self-care and embracing resilience, you can, my friend, overcome any self-doubt and fear and unlock your true potential to reach new heights of success, however you define them. Remember, your belief in yourself is the guiding light that illuminates the path to your dreams. It's not about someone else's dreams. These are your dreams. And they're going to look different it's okay. In fact, if they don't look different, I would be questioning you. You've got to put your own imprint on your dreams. So trust yourself with each decision you make so the journey is well-lived. It's your journey to be well-lived. Stay committed to your goals and let your unwavering self-belief propel you toward the future you envision. Right? Remember, it's one step at a time leads to miles of greatness. You are on a path to greatness, every single step that you take. Are you ready to take it today? Go in peace, be present, be incredible, be you. I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a glorious, blessed day. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.